uh, something that I've struggled with for a pretty decent amount of time, even kind of now, is that I, I stutter and stuff, or I have, have a stutter and stuff. And I think it's something I didn't notice until sometime during elementary school, you know? Um, I think I noticed it because I, not, like none of my family members stutter. Or at least one of them kind of does, but they kind of, it's my grandma and she has this kind of uh, stutter too, but I, a lot of my family members just say, oh, she's like a nervous wreck. And somebody, like, you know, you're such, like, you're such a nervous wreck, like playfully, like, oh, you're stuttering or whatever. But I, I noticed that my cousins and my other aunties and uncles and they, they don't do it. And I was really tripping off, tripping off of it um, because, uh, well, yeah, just like, like I said, I, I was, I was one of the only people that I felt like in the family that stuttered. And so the trippy thing is that, you know, people assume that, oh, you know, all oh, your classmates are the one that teased you about it, or, you know, did everyone ever tease you about it? And it wasn't my classmates. I actually got along with them really, really well. But the people that kind of, that kind of made me feel kind of like a little bit like cringy about it, a little, a little shameful about it were actually my cousins. And I, 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 I know before, you know, uh, I, I think before I used to be really upset about it, but I think I come to terms with being okay with it because sometimes kids might not understand or they might be going through something themselves. So I love them, <laughs> but it did kind of hurt during that time when they would tease me about it. When it came to my cousins, I think they would, um, See, I think they would just kind of tease about how, you know, like there's sometimes where I would want to say something. And what happens is kind of like the feeling of stuttering is that you have this thing that you really want to say, right? And you might say one or two words, but then I kind of describe it as like you're hitting a brick wall, right? And so you're trying, you're trying to find a way to get around this brick wall, but it's really hard. So you try multiple times to try to kind of break this wall or something like that. So it takes three, four times until you break through it, and then you actually say what you want to say. But in that process, you know, I've, I'm in myself, I'm not, I'm kind of this back and forth of, you know, hurry up and say it. Like, you know, you're taking a long time to say it, like, you know, just, just hurry up, hurry up. Like, it's kind of like this rushing, like this coach kind of being like, hurry, go do it, go do it. And you're trying, but it's just hard. And then I trip off, you know, oh shoot, are these people kind of seeing me? Like, am I making these weird contortions in my face? Am I, are they thinking uh, badly about me because I'm taking so long and it's different from what a normal person would speak? So that's kind of the things that I would go through. So they would kind of tease me about like, oh, you know, like, uh, like, yeah, I'll say like, 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 like that for a lot. And then they'll be like, 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 and I'm like, oh, free. So I just, I learned to be kind of quiet and not speak so much because I had a feeling that I knew I was gonna run into something. I anticipated that I was gonna run into a wall and not like not be able to say what I wanted to say. Yeah, it was pretty trippy. My friends didn't really say much. Um, it, I kind of didn't really know that I, I had it until my family, like my mom pointed it out or my cousins pointed it out. And um, yeah, I got along with them really well. Yeah, which is kind of trippy. <laughs> but one, I know one really defining moment where I, I was kind of like, I should try to do something about this <laughs> was I guess uh, uh, me and my friends were on a field trip. We're like in elementary school, maybe like fifth or sixth grade or something. So we're on this bus and there's this game called Punch Buggy. So if you see uh, a BMW Beetle, right, you would see that car, you would say punch buggy yellow or punch buggy blue and you punch him and you'll, you'll get a point for that game. So we'll do that throughout the entire day. And we we're on a bus on a field trip and we passed by this uh, BMW uh, car dealership, right? <laughs> so there's tons of slug bugs all over the, the dealership. And it reminded me of this episode from Simpsons where it's the exact same scenario where Bart Simpson, they're all on the bus to a field trip and they pass by a BMW thing. So all the kids were got excited and they're like, punch buggy! So everyone was just punching each other. And by the end, when they finally got to the destination, 
all the kids had like bruised arms and they were like, ah, <laughs> they're all like really in pain from playing the game. So I tried to describe to my friend who was sitting next to me this whole thing, but I just noticed like, I was just stuttering like the entire time and I was trying to describe it to him. And by the time I finished, he turned to me, he's like, what'd you say? I, ha I had no idea what'd you say? Like, what'd you say? And I was like, oh, shoot, <laughs> like this is like, he had no idea what it said at all. And so my message I was trying to get across was just like, boom, like I didn't do it. So I was like, man, maybe, maybe this is something I really need to learn to face. Cause if I can't communicate something that I kind of want to talk about, then how can I function in life? You know, cause that I don't want to have those type of conversations where a person has no idea what I'm saying. Even though my mom and, you know, my mom got really frustrated because I know, you know, when someone, when you want someone to say something and they're stuttering, it can take a really long time. So it's, there's times she tried to kind of like help me to overcome this. And she would tell me, you know, you're talking way too fast. Try to see if you can slow down a little bit. Like, don't talk a million miles per hour. Just take each time and take a breath or something. And that would help sometimes. But I think I just became really self-conscious of me like, oh, you know, I gotta slow down. I gotta make sure I take a breath. But I think in, there's still times today where I do it and it does help because my mind is going a million miles per hour, but my mouth can't keep up. So like right now I'm trying to slow down and take a breath and stuff like that. Um, another thing I try to do was speech therapy, but I don't think the therapist is really helpful. She wasn't very understanding. <laughs> so I signed up for the speech therapy because, you know, they deal with people that, or they handle people that have trouble speaking. So I went to her and she was actually a person that handles children. I, I couldn't find anyone that can help adults. So I told her like, I know I'm a grown person, but do you think you can see me and help me out? <laughs> so she did, she saw me. She started asking like questions like, oh, you know, what what do you normally do that helps you? Or just tell me about your experience. And I try to tell her like, oh, you know, there's times I try to talk to myself when I run into stuttering. And she kind of looked at me weird. She's like, you talk to yourself? <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah, I talk to myself, but yeah. And I felt like I was crazy. <laughs> and then she, I started explaining more and like, oh, there's certain people I talk to where I don't stutter. So like, the authority figures or people that I really respect, I I don't stutter with them at all. And I was telling like, you know, when I talk, maybe, <laughs> I don't know why I said it, but I said the police. And she was like, wait, you talk to the police? <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, I just, I felt like she was thinking I was crazy more than actually understanding where I'm coming from. So I was like, I, I don't want to see her again. <laughs> The last thing that I did was uh, I signed up for, it was like a workshop. I don't know how I found it, but it was a workshop for public speaking, but it was specifically for people that stutter. And I was like, oh shoot, this is actually really cool. Like, you know, it's a, a workshop. I can try out, see what techniques they might give me. And when I went there, there was about, about maybe six or seven people. And it was trippy because they all stuttered and I haven't, I feel like I haven't met anyone that has like started before and it was trippy seeing them because it's almost like I'm kind of seeing myself like is this how I look like when I study and you know like I wonder if they struggle with the same things and all this stuff and so for two days we did exercises where you know we kind of try to have a conversation with each other and just really sit there and listen or we had an exercise where we did some kind of random speech for five minutes about about politics but i had no idea anything about politics so i just switched the conversation to something but we worked the entire room and they gave us techniques and they gave me in the end they gave all of us a videotape of us doing the speech and i i still have it to this day i just feel bless you <laughs> i just feel too cringy to watch it <laughs> so i literally i still have it i just haven't I haven't watched it at all since to this day. And that was about five years ago when I did it. <laughs> it was like a really 
almost like warm experience of, of seeing people that also struggle with the same thing that I do, you know? Like they, like sometimes some people might end up stuttering worse than I do and it kind of, on the dark side of myself, it kind of is a way of relieving, of feeling relief like, oh, this dude has it worse than I do, <laughs> like, I'll see you. But then it's, at the same time, it's kind of like, man, like, you know, I could have been worse. I could have been just as bad or even worse or to the point where I probably would never even come to this, like, workshop. And it's really brave of him to even want to take this attempt to do it. And so these people kind of helped me become comfortable with, like, I'm not the only one that struggles with stuttering. So I I think even though it might not help to the point where it eliminates my stuttering, it's a way of, uh, it's like, I'm sure it helped with my development of becoming more comfortable with speaking and stuff like that. I'd probably just say, I think the person that did the social anxiety thing really hit a really good point of like baby steps, you know? Like, um, I, I think to build on top of that, something that I value is like experimenting and stuff like that. So for instance, you know, I, I stutter. And one thing that I do is that I talk really fast and I try to just spiel it out. So with experimenting, I think it's trying one thing and seeing does that work or does it not work? So does breathing, just taking the time to pause and take a breath and take your time saying it, does that make it better or worse? And if it makes it worse, then what can I do to change it? But if it makes it better, then continue it and maybe add something else on top of it. Like, I'm trying to do that myself by trying to, I'm actually trying this like social rejection thing because I really fear getting rejected. So I'm trying to take these baby steps by actually going out to get rejected and I'm kind of little like nitpicking thing of like okay I noticed I talked really fast at that time what if I take my time to talk it's just like little stuff like that so experimenting in the end that's what I give for someone that that stutters and stuff and this is something that I'm speaking from my own experience because I know I can be really hard on myself. But I think uh, the one thing is just to be accepting of the situation, you know? Like I think it's easy to say, but it's really hard to do. Um, say as if I end up having a really, really bad conversation with someone that I feel was really bad. And sometimes it could be like, oh man, I suck at conversations or something. But then I think there can be a truth and an illusion to that. So. Besides kind of writing on them be like, yeah, I am bad and like, you know, kind of coming up with the story Then I kind of say to myself like, yeah, what if I do suck at it? Then what can I do to change it? Like, okay, I do suck. So at this moment, maybe I can try to get better by little baby steps and Being okay with the idea of that. I'm not that good But I'm still I'm still important and I'm still worthy and I'm still, you know, a human being and it's, it's accepting that, that I'm not good at some things and I'm also, am really good at some things. I can't be good at everything. So I gotta get a little better. And I know there's a second thing, but I don't remember. <laughs> so just to keep it simple, I think I'd say that to learn to accept it and what can I do to change it? And is it really important? I guess that's it. If it is it really important for you to want to become a better conversationalist? And for me it is because I, I want to learn to be, have more meaningful conversations with people and not be silent all the time because I feel fearful talking to people.